Okay, magandang araw uli aking mga um sudyante, no? So, ako ito ulit, no? Um, aside sa ating lecture na ginagawa ko face-to-face, ay sinisigurado ko rin na meron akong recorded video, recorded lecture para sa mga um, kailangan ito mapakinggan ulit, no? Para talagang masituit natin na talagang tayo yung nagtuturo, no? Talagang todo-todo ang ating tuturo. Walang rason para tayo babagsak sa mga exams, okay? Walang rason na hindi tayo matutupo. So, dito tayo sa Law Enforcement Organization and Administration. Uh, interagency approach. So, we are aligned to the latest um, curriculum no? na binigay sa atin ng PRC when it comes to CL. So, yun. Let's go, no? Gawin natin tong oversimplified para mas madali natin yung video. So, we all know, class, that there are five pillars ng Philippine criminal justice system. So, yan ang law enforcement, unang-una, the initiator or action of action or the prime mover, yung unang gumagalaw sa pillar natin, no? Ikalawa ang prosecution, the champion and state representatives, no? Ang na, 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 bilang attorney, di ba, ng people of the Philippines. Korte, di ba? Yan ang center pillar natin, okay? And the final arbiter, arbiter of justice, we have the correction, no? Makikita natin sa iba't ibang subjects ng CLE, such as um, therapeutic modalities, no? Non-instinct, instinct um, corrections. And also, the last part is, the last one is the community pillar. The informal or the base pillar. So, class, pag mayroong question, what is the base pillar? No other than community, no? Nag-start sa community, nagwawakasin sa community. So, that's why it's base pillar. So, na, dito tayo. Law enforcement, organization, and administration, interagency approach ay nasa unang-unang pillar ng Philippine criminal justice system. So, yeah. Dito ay sa etymology ng police, ng word na police, no? Um, origin of the word police is from politia, Greek word means government of the city. Politia, Roman word naman siya, na ibig sabihin ay condition ng state or government. And police, French word, which means later adopted by English language. Yun yung patrol year, no? Na to, um, to patrol by means of foot, di ba? So, class, uh, memorize natin yan, okay? So, dahil nga police organization and administration to, so we have to define what is organization, di ba? Part yun ng recitation natin, di ba? A group of person working together for a common goal or objectives, no? Sila ay grupo ng mga tao na nagtatrabaho na may iisa silang layunin. Another meaning is, ito ay um, isang klase ng asosasyon ng mga tao na meron, na gusto nilang meron silang ma-attain na layunin, no? O meron silang um, ginagol, no? May layunin sila. So, i-connect natin yung police at organization. So, police organization means itong grupo ng mga trained na tao. Ay, okay, sorry, sorry. So, trained ng mga tao sa field ng public safety administration no? so, pa, para sa kal kaligtasan ng ating publiko na um, na-engage sa achievement of goals and objectives at nag-promote ng maintenance of peace and order, protection of life, property, enforcement of law, and prevention of crimes. So sa madaling sabi at madalit madaling sabi, ito ay grupo ng mga um, sinanay ng mga individual sa larangan ng um, kaligtasang pang publiko na meron silang layunin na magkaroon ng kaayusan at kapayapaan proteksyon ng mga buhay at ari-ari-arian ari, 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 at pagsasatubad ng mga batas at para maiwasan ang mga krimen. Okay? Tagalog na Tagalog, ha? Okay. Sorry, class. Medyo...
So, law enforcement agency na tayo, no? It pertains to organization responsible for enforcing the law. Collective term for professional who are dedicated to upholding and enforcing the law and statutes that currently enforced in given jurisdiction. So, wala lang yung ibang, ibig sabihin kundi yung mga ahensya, di ba? Ng um, ahensya na, na, na nagpap, tap, uh, nagpapatupad ng batas, katulad ng BGMP, BFP, PNP. Uh, di ba? Ano, ano pa ba mga agency natin na nag-enforce ng batas? LTO, DOTR. Um, at marami pa ang iba, di ba? PDEA, okay? NBI. So, yun yun, no? Ito ay tumutukoy sa mga organisasyong responsable sa pagpapatupad uh, ng batas. Ito ay, tina- ito ay collective term. Sinabi natin collective term, no? Um, general na tawag sa mga taong professional na dedicated sila na ipatupad ang batas at ang mga batas at mga iba't ibang batas na ginawa o dapat ipatupad sa isang um, given na lugar o jurisdiction. So, dito na tayo sa mga teorya ng police service, di ba? We have two. Yan ang home rule theory and the continental theory. So, kaya sabi ko nga, i-codings nyo lang to para di kayo medyo, ano, kasi kapag kinabisado nyo yan, abay, no, ma- mahihirapan kahit tayo, no? Kasi mas marami tayong dapat i- i- um, paano ba to? I-memorize sa criminology. So, para makasave tayo na space ng brain natin, so, eto na hinighlight ko na yung dapat lang na ipasok sa utak natin, no? And pag, pag mga ano, i i na lang natin, expound na lang natin, okay? Pag sinabi mo home rule theory, kaya nga, home, so parang bahay, no? Rule sa bahay, no? Ang mga policemen daw dito are regarded as the servant of the community who rely for efficiency of their function. Upon the express needs of the people, policemen are civil servants whose key duty is the preservation of public peace and security. So, we all know, di ba? Na yun ang res- um, trabaho ng polis. Pero dito sa teori na to, ang mga polis daw ay alipin, di ba? Alipin o nagsuserve sa komunidad. Yun ang pinagkaiba nila ni continental theory. Magka... Magkaiba, magkaiba sila. Kasi pag sinabi natin continental theory na to class, ang mga policemen are regarded the slave or, or the servants of the higher authorities. The people have no share or have little participation with the duties or no connection with the police organization. So kung sa home rule theory class, ang mga police ay alipin o nagsiserve sa komunidad, sa continental theory, hindi. Ang police daw ay nagsiserve sa mga matataas na tao. No? Pag sinabi natin matataas na tao, yun yung mga nasa higher class ng society natin. Mga mayayamang tao. Ah, mga politiko. Mga mayors. Diba? Yung mga nasa, nasa tuktok mga tatsulok. No? Yun daw ang sinaserve, pinagsiservisyohan ng mga polis. Ang mga tao daw ay walang partisipasyon no? o connection sa polis organization. So, yun lang ang teorya natin sa police service. Tandaan lang, pag home rule, nag-reserve ang tao sa komunidad. Pag continental, nag-reserve ang police sa mayayamang tao, sa matataas sa tao. So, sa concepts naman tayo. No, kanina kasi, um, teorya tayo. Ngayon, concept na tayo. So, pag concept, meron tayong dalawang concept, di ba? The old concept o yung matandang konsepto at ang modern concept concept, yung modern ng konsepto. So, class, again, in- in-highlight ko na yung mga dapat nating ano yun, no? Pero, yeah, mag-focus tayo dito. Siyempre, magkaiba sila, no? Hindi sila magkapareho. Pag sinabi kasi nating old concept, police service gives impression of being merely a suppress- suppressive machinery. This philosophy advocates that the measurement of police competence is the increasing number of arrests throwing offenders in detention facility rather than trying to prevent them from committing crimes. So, sa old concept daw kasi sinasabi na pag mas maraming pag-aaresto ang nangyayari, mas effective ang police. No? Pag mas maraming nahuhuli ang mga police, marami nakukulong, aba, ang galing-galing ng police. No? Ang galing. No? Pag modern concept, iba siya. Diba? Pag modern concept, baliktad na baliktad siya sa old concept. Malamang, di ba? 
kung ang old concept sa um, suppressive machinery, ang modern concept naman ay bilang daw, sabi, police regards as a first line of defense of criminal justice and organ of crime prevention. So, dito sa modern concept dahil siya ang unang-unang pillar ng CJS, doon pala sa law enforcement level, pinifrevent na yung permit, no? Hindi na ginagawa, hindi na pinapaandar, no? Doon palang iniiwasan na yung permit. So, police efi- efficiency is measured by decreasing number of crimes. Broadens police activity to cater to social services has for its mission the welfare of the individual as well as of the community in general. So, sabi ko nga kas kanina, baliktad sila. Pag old concept, mas maraming aresto, mas maraming nahuli, mas maraming nakulong, ay goods na goods ang police, magaling. Pero sa modern concept, sabi daw, mas konti daw ang ginawang krimen ng mga tao. Doon daw nasusukat ang galing ng mga police. No? So, kayo naniniwala doon, no? Kasi diba kung magaling talaga ang police sa isang um, jurisdiction, doon pa lang sa level nila, wala nang gumagawa ng krimen. Okay? No? Mas hindi involved ang tao sa krimen. Sige, sige. So, evolution na kami ng policing system, no? Ano na yung ating, uh, yung mga sinaunang policing system, no? Unang-una, ang Anglo-Saxon, Saxon, period of policing system, yan ay nung 600 to 1,006 after death or ton policing system. So, ang system of policing emerged during the Anglo-Saxon period whereby all female residents were required to guard the town or ton, no? Tinawag nilang ton. To preserve peace and protect the lives and property of the people. Ten families in town or ton equaled a tithing. So, no, merong plural word ang tan, no? Tithing, no? Each tithing elected a leader who was known as the tithing one. Since ten tithings amounted to 100 na ton, the leader of 100 families was named the reel. No, gets, 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 gets. No, ganda yan, ganda yan. Ito na yung system noong panahon ng Anglo-Saxon period. Yan yung 600 to 1,006 after death, diba? Na lahat ng mga lalaking residente ay required na magbantay sa kanilang bayan, no? Na tinatawag kapag isa ka lang na bantay, ikaw ay tinatawag na ton. No? Para maprotektahan mo ang mga tao, mapromote mo ang kaayusan at kapaypaan, no? Sampung pamilya daw. Pag may sampung pamilya sa ta... Um, Oh yeah, sampung pamilya ay katumbas ng tithing, no? Kapag sampung pan daw ay isang tithing. So, ang isang tithing, no? Ang isang tithing na may sampung pamilya, okay? Ay mag uh, bubuto sila ng isang leader nila na tinatawag nilang tithing man, no? Since ang sampung tithing class ay may 100 na ton. Kasi nga, sabi ko nga sa inyo, sam- oh my gosh, asan na yun? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, kasi okay ha, simpleng math, ma- simpleng math, isang ton, pag may sampu na yung sampung ton, tighting. So, kapag may sampung tighting, no, mag, aano sila ng leader nila, Since 100 na yung sampung tithing eh, 100 ton na yon di ba? mag elect sila ng leader nila, ito yung tawag na nating tithing man. So, kapag meron ng 100 families, tinatawag na nating rib. Okay? Pareho ang tithing man at ang rib ay elected official. Pag sabi natin official, elected official, ito yung officialis na pinagbobotohan no, ng majority ng mga tao. At meron silang ju- judicial power, ba? Diba? As well as the police authority. No, meron silang police authority, meron din silang judicial power. Nung panahon nila, no? So, let's go on the second one, the hue and cry. ba? Diba? Sabi natin yung hingi na tuloy ang iiyak, ba? Diba? Ayan. It provides for a method of apprehend- apprehending a criminal by an act of pumping. Shout to call all male members and residents to assemble and arrest us. So, speak yung hue and cry, yung sisigaw, Tulong! Tulong! Ganyan, ganyan. At iiyak-iyak, ano? Tatawagin niya lahat ng mga lalaki sa bayan nila. At yun, ha? Gagawa ng arrest. Okay? Next one is the... 
So, trial and ordeal, no? A judicial practice. So, kung sinabi natin judicial practice is have on, like, in court, no? So, may trial na nangyari, no? Where, in guilt or innocence of the accused is determined by sus- subjecting him to an unpleasant, usually danger to experience the word ordeal was derived from the medieval Latin word de indicum, which means a miraculous decision. Na yun, no? So, marami kasi tayong klase ng trial by ordeal. So, ah, uh, pina- ginagawa ko dito ay, di ba, may mga ano tayo, duladulaan tayo dito. So, pag sinabi mong trial and ordeal, no, ang, ang rason kung bakit magiging guilty ka is natalo ka or doon sa ordeal na ginawa. Kung nari, ang ordeal na ginawa is yung um, yung sa paglutang, ano, tatalian kayo ng upuan, itutalian kayo sa upuan, tapos ilulubog kayo sa tubig, no? Kung sino man yung malulunod doon, doon yung guilty, no? Kung sino yung lulutang doon at makakaligtas doon, siya yung inosente. O kaya naman, yung pwedeng, um, ang ordeal na mangyari is duel, no? Sa duel, gagamit kayo ng kuchilyo at magsasaksakan kayo. Kung sino yung matatalo, doon sa patayan ng ginawa nyo, eh, siya yung guilty, no? At kung sino man yung mananalo, siya yung inosente. So, marami tayong klase ng ordeal, pero yun na nga, means of miraculous decision. Um, humihiling sila sa Diyos na sana, Panginoon, no, um, patnubayan mo at yung inosente ay panalunin mo sa ganito, sa ganitong ordeal namin. So, ganun ang sistema nila before, okay? So, what if kung ikaw ang inosente tapos mahina ka sa duelo, ikaw yung namatay, no? Ikaw yung guilty. So, ganun siya. Um, noong Norman period of policing system, so, kanina kasi yung aglo, uh, um, kanina yung iba yung period na ngayon sa second period na tayo, Norman period of policing system, nangyari to noong 1066 and 1225 after death, no? Yung Shire Reeve, Shire Reeve, no? Nasa module natin yan. When we share, when we share, when we say sires, shires, ito ang division ng 55 military areas in England under the regime of France. Pag sinabi natin yung rim, ito yung headman, so yun yung leader, you know? Siya yung military leader, um, lieutenants of army who is charge of the shires. So, siya yung leader ng 55 military areas. So, rim siya. <coughs> Sorry. Two constabuli, or the keeper of the horse, was appointed to each village to aid the reeve in his duties. It became, it became the source of the word constable. No? Reeve? Sheriff is a form, is from the word sheriff came. Is from the word sheriff came. So, yung word na sheriff, no, narinig natin sa mga English countries, no? Pag sheriff, tatawagin naman ng sheriff, no? Yung mga pinapanood natin. Sa palabas, diba? Iba yung kanilang tawag sa mga pulis, mga cops, ba? Diba? Sheriff, ganyan. So, galing yan sa Shire Reeve system. A person with absolute powers that no one could question his or her action. Okay? We have the traveling judge. Second is the traveling judge. Traveling judge is the judge selected to hear cases which were formerly being oh my gosh what happened okay um traveling judge ito kasi nabi word no traveling judge no judge na nagto travel no ito judge selected to hear cases which were formerly being judged by the shire and tasked to travel through the heat and hear criminal cases This was the first instance of the division of police and the judicial power. So before kasi, there is an absolute power on the Shire Reef, di ba? So pag sinabing absolute power, siya na yung police, siya pa yung judge nung mga time yun. So dito sa traveling judge, no? Oh my gosh. Wait lang, nagalogal. So dito sa traveling judge, yung mga kaso na judge ng Shire Reef, na may task na kailangan niyang pumunta sa iba't ibang lugar to hear criminal cases. 
ginagawa ng isang traveling judge. No? So, parang tinuturo, tinutulungan niya yung Shire Reeve dito sa part na to. So, ito yung unang pagkakataon na nahati ang kapangyarihan ng pulis at ang judicial powers na dapat nga naman talaga. No? Kasi noong unang panahon kasi, noong panahon ng Shire Reeve, si Shire Reeve na yung pulis, siya pa yung nagbibigay ng, siya pa yung naghihir ng kaso, siya pa yung judge. Okay? So, sa traveling judge, no, nagkaroon ng diversion ng trabaho. Um, Legis Hendisi, so ito yung an act that was enacted during the, this period with the following features. No? Um, ito yung law ni um, King Henry, di ba? So, ito yung mga um, laman ng Legis Henry. So, meron tayong tatlo. No? Offense were classified as against the king and individual. So, hinati niya yung ano-ano yung mga kasalanan laban sa sa hari at ano-ano ang mga kasalanan na laban sa individual. So, para siyang maahalin tulad natin sa ngayon, di ba? Sa revised penal code natin, hati-hati ang kaso, di ba? Crimes against person, crimes against chastity, crimes against per- property. So, sa unang pagkakataon, ang legis hindisi na hinati nila, no? kinlasified nila. So, dito rin, define sa legis hindisi na ang policeman ay isang public servant, di ba? Isang um, alipin ng publiko, no? And dito rin um, na, na sabe or naganap yung poli- the police and the citizen have the broad power to arrest. It introduced the system called citizen's arrest na yung ginagamit natin ngayon. No? Na hindi yung police ang may pagkakat o oh, merong power na mag-arresto. Even though the police and the citizen itself. Diba? Kasi alam naman natin, diba? na dapat nga naman. Diba? Dahil hindi naman ganun lagi na may pulis sa lahat ng lugar o sa lahat ng dapol. No? So, usually, yung mga crime, mas una yan nakikita ng mga individual. No? Kaya, eh, andyan yung individual, no? Why? Ba't hindi pwedeng siya na mismo mag-arrest? No? Kaya, dyan na introduce ang citizen's arrest. So, grand jury was created to inquire on the facts of the law. Magna Carta na tayo for Magna Carta, another law enacted upon the demand of the knights of the round table forcing the king to sign the same with the following features. So Magna Carta no hanggang ngayon nagagamit natin yung word na Magna Carta for women, di ba? Magna Carta for children. So ito yung um ito naman, ito yung batas na nagdemand yung mga um knights na sinabi natin knights ano mga Tagalog yan. Um yung yung di ba yung alipin ng hari no na nakasabay na sa kanang kabayo. No? At yun, yung may mga armor na bakal. So, um, din nagdemand sila sa hari na mag-sign sila ng, mag-sign ng hari ng um, batas na may mga laman, no? Na mga following features na to. So, ano-ano yung mga features ng Magna Carta na yun, no? Unang-una, walang tao na kukunin para ikulong kung walang legal judgment o walang sapat na basihan o walang trial na nangyari, no? Ikalawa, walang tao na kakasuhan ng murder unless merong pruweba o yung kataw- merong pruweba na katawan ng biktima. Na hanggang ngayon, meron tayo niyan, di ba, sa murder, no? Hanggang ngayon, kapag wala naman yung body of the crime ng murder, so ano pa ba yung body of the crime ng murder? Yung mismo katawan ng namatay, no? Walang murder na nangyari. Okay? So, Naisip na nila yun way, way back ago, no? Nung after death, ano, thousand, thousand after death. Na walang dapat kasuhan ng murder kung wala namang probeba na katawan ng patay na bit, diba? diba? So, ano pa ba? Ano ba yung laman ng Magna Carta na yan? So, yun, yun lang pala yung laman ng Magna Carta, no? Frank Fledge system na tayo. Um, it is a system of policy where I, whereby a group of 10 neighboring male residents over 12 years of age were required to guard the town to preserve peace and protect the lives and properties of the people. So, this is a proud-fledged system, di ba? Sayang ko na yan sa inyo, so, mas comprehensive yung ating module, no? Ito yung sistema ng pag, um, policy na were, whereby Grupo ng sampung um, neighboring male residents na meron ng edad na 12 years um, pataas, no, able um, male body, no, ay kailangan magbantay ng kanilang 
lugar no para maprotektahan ang kapayapaan at maprotektahan ang buhay at ari-ari ng mga tao. So nung panahon na lang, sa so, so, letter C na tayo, nung panahon ng Westminster period of policy system, that is 12,000, um, 1,885 to 1,500 after death. So unang-una, statute of 1295. Ito yung kauna, ito yung pinanggalingan ng curfew hours. No? Kaya may curfew hours tayo ngayon, no? The law that marked the beginning of the curfew hours, which demanding the closing the gates of London during sundown. So, kapag um, bumaba na yung araw, sasarado na ang gates ng London. So, yan ang curfew, no? Palahon na yan. Justice of peace, three or four men were who were learned in the law of the land were given the authority to pursue arrest, chastise, and imprison violators of law. They handled penal felonies, misdemeanor, and infractions of city or villages ordinance, ordinances. This was later abolished after 75 years later. So, justice of peace, no? Um, tatlo, apat ng tao na natuto ng batas ng lupa, no? Nung panahon nila ay binibigyan ng kapag may alam ka sa batas, binibigyan ka ng otoridad na mga aresto, no? Magpulong dahil sa mga paglabag sa mga batas, no? At mga, yun, ang mga batas Um, naghahawak sila ng kasong felony. Gusto naman yung felony. Yung paglabag na talaga sa mga um, kodigo de penal nila. Yung mga misdemeanor, mga simple, yung mga special laws at infractions, kahit yung mga curfew, no? mga simple paglabag na sa kanilang barangay o city. Um, pero na-abolish din siya after 75 years. Okay, Courts of Star Chamber noong 1487 eto ay spe, um, special court na dinesign para um, doon hear yung mga offenders laban sa state, di ba? Merong isang kwarto na sinet up na hugis between, no? At ang mga judges daw ay binibigyan ng kapangyarihan at ang kapangyarihan na to is i-force ang testimony from dependent leading to great abuse of power for the of the part of justice. Just, um, judges. So, parang, ang nangyari is, yung mga judges daw ay meron silang kapangyarihan para puwersahin ang testimonya ng dependent. So, pag sinabi mong dependent, ito yung re-reklamo, no? Para, parang nangyari, nakaabuso, no? There's a, abuse of power sa part ng mga just, judges. Uh, merchant police, 15,000, um, 1,500 after death. Merchants began employing person to protect their property. Banks, employee guards, and night watchmen were hired to watch businesses, establishment, and private detectives were, detectives were employed to locate and identify stolen property. So, kaya nga merchant police, no, yung mga mga ngalakal na ang nag-hire sa kanila. So, dahil nga ang mga, mamala, mga ngalakal ay mga negosyante, no, para maprotektahan ng kanilang ari-arian, bako, di ba? Sila ay nag-hire ng mga tao magbantay sa kanila, no, even sa gabi. Um, magbantay ng kanilang mga um, business establishments, no, may mga private detective pa sila, no, para In case naman may manakaw sa kanila, mahanap yung mga nagnakaw at mabalik yung mga gamit nila. Okay? Charot. Um, parochial police. Dividing the people of the cities in the religious areas or parishes and they bond together and employ their own police to protect them and their property. So, kung isa yung parochial police may pinalaman sa mga religious, ano no, parish. Kung isa yung parish, yung mga simbahan, no. Um, pinahati nila yung mga tao sa syudad nila into their religious area or parishes para mga parokya, no. At nagsisama-sama sila at nag-hire sila ng kanilang sariling pulis na magpoprotekta ng kanilang ari-arian at syempre magpoprotekta na rin sa kanila. So, nung taong 18,029, si Sir Robert Peel 
So class, lalabas na malabas sa exam yan. Who is the father of modern policy system? Ha? No other than Robert Peel. So siya ang father ng modern ng policy system. So bakit kaya? Ano? So si, si Sir Robert Peel ang naging father ng modern policy dahil sa kanyang Peel's concept. So sa mga konsepto niya ng Paul policy. So tinawag natin tong Peel's concept. So in um award on his own name no parang pang ano natin sa sariling pangalan no ito yung mga concepts niya no ang police ay meron dapat isang organized along military lines ang police then should have a place under screening and training so ang mga police dapat initrain no ini-screen ang police should be hired on a probationary basis so sinabi natin probationary basis hindi pa to regular no under observation pa no And the police should be deployed by time and by area. So, may oras, no? At may um, area ka lang na um, babantayan. Police headquarters should be accessible to the people. No? Kailangan nalalapitan ng mga tao. Kasi so, diba, mga tao ang unang nakaka-responde or unang-unang respondent ng crime. So, kailangan may masusumbungan sila agad. And... Police record keeping is essential. Diba? Para sa mga future natin references, kung ba, ang nangyari kami nito is having a con- connection to the crime year, year back ago at is meron silang record, di ba? Ito ka lang. So, early policy system. So, early policy system pa rin. So, but it has a way connection on the different places. So, unang-una ang kin policy. So, the family of the offended individual was expected expected to assume responsibility, responsibility for justice. So, the family of the victim was allowed to exact vengeance. So, kung sabihin kin policy, yung pamilya ng mga naagrabyadong tao, ang ina-expect natin na maghanap ng um, sarili nilang hustisya, no? sila ang may responsable sa sarili nilang hustisya. So, sa time na to, ang pamilya ng mga biktima ay pinapayagan na maghigante. Okay? Um, during nung sa Egypt, no? ancient rulers had elite unit to protect them. So, syempre, yung mga um, mga pero, no? yung mga katungkulan ng early um ng ancient Egypt no so meron silang elite na force na magpo-protekta sa kanila so also ginawa nila yung tinatawag nating medjays so ito ay klase or another kind ng police force na ang pangunahing trabaho ay bantayan ang mga tombs and syempre huli yung mga magnanakaw Inintroduce din ng um, ancient Egypt yung paggagamit ng aso bilang um, guards nila and protectors. So, let's go naman tayo sa Rome. Ay, ay, sorry. Medyo matagal yung galaw. Uh, sorry, nag So, nung ancient Rome, ginawa nila ang isang kauna-una ng organized police force na tinatawag nila Vigils of Rome or Vigilist or Bani. So, sila ang watchmen ng syudad o tumitingin ng syudad, no? Na ang kanilang pangunahing trabaho ay firefighting. So, nagiging bumbero sila. So, and policing, no? Police sila, dash, Bumbero sila. So, the vigil acted as night watch. So, sila yung nagbabati tuwing gabi at nanghuli ng mga magtanakaw. Keeping an eye out of the vulgars and hunting down runaway slaves. And were on occasion used maintain order in the street. So, um, binabantayan din nila yung mga magtanakaw, di ba? At yung mga tu- tumatakas na alipin. Kasi nung panahon ng Romano, eh, may mga alipin din, no? So, yung mga tumatakas na alipin, ay eh, binabantayan din ng mga vigils, no? At para mapanatili ang kaayusan at 
um, kapayapaan sa mga um, street, no? Sa mga skinita. Ang vigils ay dealt primary, primarily with petty crimes and look for disturbances of peace while they're patrolled the street. So, yun nga. There are also um, nakakasagupa sila ng mga iba't ibang krimen at naghahanap sila ng mga tao, no? Binabantay nila yung mga sumisira din talaga ng kapayapaan. At along na, na nagbabantay sila o nagpapatrol sila sa mga kasakasada. So, gumawa din sila ng special unit na tinatawag nilang Praetorian Guards. So, ito ay special force ng mga guards na ginawa ng um, emperor ng Roman as a emperor's personal guard. So, yung personal guard ng mga emperor, tinatawag natin yun again na Praetorian Guards. So, bilang isang personal na guard ng emperador, so, ang pangunahin nilang trabaho ay maprotektan siyempre emperador laban sa assassination. Kung pagbarel, pagpana, pagpatay, no? Ano mga iba't iba mga uri ng pag-atake sa emperador. So, move on na tayo. Let's go on England. So, dito, no? Yung frank pledge system o yung mutual pledge system. No? Nire-require na lahat ng lalaki na mayroong edad 12 anos pataas ay nire-require sila na mag-join o umisa sa grupo ng mga tao na tinatawag nilang titing. Diba? Ang member ng mga titing ay tinatawag na titing men. Ang constable ay nagsisilbing leader ng mga ng sampung titings. So, ang pangunahing trabaho ng mga titings ay maprotekta ng kanilang village o syudad laban sa mga magnanakaw at sa mga hayop na pwedeng matake, di ba? At tinawag din nila tong at later inorganize na nila to bilang maging shires. So, ang isang shire ay pinamumunuan ng kanilang leader na tinatawag natin shire rib. At ito ang um, pinagmula ng salitang shire at also, ang trabaho nila ay huli ng mga nagkakasala sa um, batas. So, di na tayo sa parish constable. Ano? So, parish constable, so it's connected with church, no? Is a parish official charged with controlling the crime. Appointed to serve for one year. Duties include organizing watchmen to guard the gates. So, medyo umuusbong na rin dito ang simbahan noong panahon na yun. Ano? Um... Ina-appoint sila para manalbihan lang. Siyempre, parish constable, it's um, explaining about a person, no? Na ina-appoint sila na magtrabaho for one year. Okay? So, next na tayo. Oh my gosh, bakit ganun? So, sa panahon ng Aberia, ang mga watchman ay tatawagin nila ay magtatay ng UN crime. Ay, UN cry, sorry. Na tatawag sa mga armado o yung mga kanilang pulis. Um, kung saan nananahan sa mga parish nila would stop that they are doing and come to the aid of the constable. So yan, sa modern na tayo, sa modern policy system na tayo. Ito na yung panahon sa lugar ng England, okay? We have the Bow Street Runners and the Metropolitan Police of Priest of Act 1820 and so on and so forth. So let's go first on Bow Street Runners. So sa Bow Street Runners, ito ay grupo ng mga tao na inorganize para mangaresto ng mga offender ng crime, ba? Ito ay inorganized ni Henry Fielding isang magistrate sa London noong 1749. Um, ang pangalang ito ay inadopt nila sa pangalan ng isang street kung saan ang office ni Henry Fielding o yung organizer nila ang ay, kung saan makikita yung office ng street. Office ni Henry Fielding, anong street yon? Kaya Bow Street Runner siya, no? When Fielding retired as magistrate, he was replaced by his blind brother, John Fielding. So, nung nag-retire na si Henry Fielding, 
sa pag-organize itong Bowser Runners, siya ay pinadin ng kanyang kapatid na si John Fielding. Okay? So, maangas na si John Fielding eh, kasi even though nabulag siya, kaya niya mag-recognize ng 3,000 na kriminal sa pamamagitan na ng boses. No? Imagine mo yun, no? 3,000, no? Kaya niya i-recognize, no? Base lang sa pananalita. Okay, let's go on Metropolitan Police of Act 1829. So, itong batas na to ay ginawa sa, uh, bilang kauna-una ang modern police force sa London, England na dinawag na Metropolitan Police Service. So, ang batas na ito ay pinasa sa um, one of the initiative of Sir Robert, Hen- um, Robert William, yung ating father of modern policy, bilang miyembro ng parliament. So, ang headquarters ng Metropolitan Police Service ay matatagpuan sa Scotland Yard na tinatawag na natin ngayon na New Scotland Yard. Okay? So, again, class, reminder ko, si Sir Robert Peel ay re- na-recognize bilang ama ng modern policing system. So, mag-move on na tayo. Punta na tayo sa United States of America. So, America na tayo. Sa New York Police Department. So, New York Police Department, it was created in 1849 sa New York, USA. So, ito ay na-recognize bilang kauna-unahang modern style police department sa US. At ang pinakamalaking police force sa buong mundo, no? New York Police Department. So, we have to take note this class. Ito ay minolder, modeled after the Metropolitan Police Service sa London. Boston Police Department, ang pinakamatandang police department sa US. So, kanina, largest police department sa buong mundo. Ang codings natin sa Boston Police Department, siya ang matandang police department sa US, no? The first night watch was established in Boston in 1631, formally founded in May 1859. So, ginawa siya, tinayo siya noong May 1854. 54 pala, so. Okay, no? Kung meron tayong Robert Pin na modern ng ating policy system, we have August Bulmer na father of modern law enforcement. So, kanina, father ng modern policy system, Itong si Robert Bulmer, father na siya ng modern law enforcement. So, yeah. Tara. So, August Bulmer bilang father ng modern law enforcement dahil sa kanyang contribution sa development ng, sa field ng criminal justice sa US. Siya ay isang author na libro, police administration, na nagbigay o oh, nagsilbi bilang guide, di ba? Sa pag administra sa ng uh, organization ng mga police sa US and was the first police chief of Berkeley, California. So, siya ang kuna-una ang police chief ng Berkeley, California. So, bakit si August Bulmer ang other father of modern law enforcement? Dahil syempre, siya ay author siya ng isang libro, no? Police Administration ng bigay ng guide, no? Nagsitibi ng guides administration ng police organization, organization sa US. Pali, no? Um, okay, mga pinaka-importanting personalidad sa evolusyon ng Philippine policy. So, kanina, sa ibang lugar, dito na tayo sa Pilipinas mag-focus, no? Sila-sila yung mga tao, importanting tao no, sa pag-evolve ng pol- um, Philippine policy. So, una si Brigadier General Rafael Crame, ang kauna-unahang Filipino chief police, chief ng Philippine Consabulari noong 1917. Kaya nga diba yung Cam Crame, no? Sa kanya pinangalan, kay Brigadier General Rafael Crame. Kauna-unahang Filipino chief ng Philippine Consabulari. So si Coronel Antonio Torres naman, ang kauna-unahang Filipino chief of police of Manila Police Department noong 1935. Colonel Lambert Gavalera ang kauna-una ng Chief of Police ng Manila Police Department pagkatapos ng Philippine Independence from U.S. of America in 1946. Director General Cesar Nazareno ang kauna ng Chief ng Philippine National Police. Okay, kabisaduhin yan, ha? Sorry. We have the function and police organization. So, 
bago natin aralin, syempre, ang buong PNP organization structure. Alamin natin yung mga function nila, no? So, we have the first, the primary or the line function, the staff or administrative function, and the operation. Ano pa ba yung isa nating function? Mga ikat... Okay. So, ang ikatlo natin ng auxiliary function. So, unang-una ang line function, ikalawa ang staff functions, and the auxiliary function. So, ano-ano ba yung mga nasa ilalim nun? Yung mga under. Bakit ganun? Okay, sorry, sorry. So, ano-ano ba yung mga nasa ilalim nun ating alamin? Ano? Yan doon, ang nagahang yung laptop. So, unang-una natin ang primary or line function. So, sinasabi sa line function, ito yung mga function na nag-carry out ng major purposes of the organization. Delivering the service and dealing directly with the public. So, sila yung mga hindi nasa opisina, no? Sila yung talagang gumagawa ng major purpose ng organization. Sila yung malap lapit sa tao, no? Sa publiko. Example niyan yung patrolling, traffic duties, crime investigation. Okay? They have the direct contact with public. So, when we say yan yung primary and line function. So, let's go on the second, the staff and administrative function. Ito yung mga function na dinesign para supportahan naman ng ating line function at mag-assist no, sa performance ng line function. So in other words, sila ang um, tutulong sa line functions natin. Okay, um, alin-alin po ba yung mga example nun, ma'am? Okay, we have the planning, the research, the budgeting, and the legal advices, no? Siyempre, kunwari, kung ikaw ay nagpapatrol o kaya ikaw ay gumagawa ng traffic duties or nag-iimbestiga ng crime. Siyempre, kailangan mo rin ng pagpaplano, no? Kaya nga may mga planning officers, di ba? Okay? May mga legal officers, di ba? Um, yung mga researchers natin, okay? So, sila yung tumutulong not on the sobrang physical contact nila sa public, pero kasama sila sa pagpaplano, sa pag-research, sa pagbibigay ng mga um, advice na legal, okay? Sa last one na tayo, we have the auxiliary function. So, auxiliary function, ito yung mga function na involve sa logistical operations of the organization. So, Example natin yung communication, maintenance, records, management, supplies and equipment, and management. So, there are more on office, di ba? So, example yung training. Okay? Yung training sa loob ng PNP, di ba? Um, communication, maintenance, di ba? Yung mismo maintenance ng kanilang offices, the records, management, and the supplies. Okay. So, isa-isayin natin yan, no? Dito sa sunod natin slide. Okay, number one, we, we have the organic units in the police organizations. Also, yan, ito yung mga organic units natin. So, organic units in the police organization. So, ano-ano yung mga units na gumagawa ng trabaho ng line function, administrative function, and the auxiliary function. So, sinabi ko kanina, no? Operational units, ito yung mga gumagawa ng trabaho ng line function, katulad ng patrol, traffic, investigation, and vice control. So, administrative units, ito yung mga units na nagtatrabaho, na gumagawa ng trabaho ng mga nasa administrative function. So, katulad ng personnel, tenants, planning, tsaka training. Okay? Service units naman, class, kapag gumagawa ka ng trabaho ng auxiliary function. Oh, hindi na siya gumala. Ganun. So, yung service units naman, yun yung gumagawa ng trabaho ng auxiliary function, katulad ng communication and records management. So, yaya, yeah, yeah, alam na natin. So, let's go na tayo sa organizational units ng police organization. So, functional units. Um, we have functional units, we have territorial units, okay? So, functional units, ito yung functional division ng gagawaran, no? Na nade-describe sa following um, tawag, no? Sa following terms. Una, ang bureau, no? Kaya nasabi natin, yun ang bureau. 
Um, it is a largest organic functional unit within a large department and comprised of number of division. Last, tumalabas sa board exam. So, kailangan nyo kabisaduhin, okay? So, ang bureau ay binubuo ng mga divisions, no? number of divisions. Division naman, yun ang primary subdivision ng bureau. Okay? Kaya siya ang bumubuo ng mga, ng bureau. Yung bilang ng mga division. Sumunod section, so ito ang functional unit sa loob ng isang division with necessary specialization. Kaya section, di ba? And unit, a functional group with a section of smallest functioning group within an organization. So, punta tayo sa territorial units. Ito na yung lumalabas nito sa board exam. No? Pag sinabi natin yung post, text point or location to which an officer assigned for duty. So, post. Route, a length of street, street designed, designated for patrol purposes, also called beat. Okay? Line beat. Okay. Pag beat naman, an area de designed for patrol purposes, whether foot or motorized. Sector, an area containing two or more beat, route, or post. District naman, a geographical subdivision of city for patrol purposes, usually with its own station. Area naman, kapag a section or territorial division of a large city, it comprises of designated districts. Plus, kabisaduhin ha. Okay, organizational structure. It is a systematic arrangement of the relationship of the members, positions, department, and function or work of the organization. It is comprises of function, relationship, responsibilities, and authorities of each individuals within the organization. So, organizational chart is an illustration in a form of a chart which represents the organizational structure, structure, the mechanical means of depicting the organization. Organizational structure. So, why we have to lecture it class? Kasi we're gonna go with the PNP organizational structure. So, aalamin na natin ang organizational structure ng PNP. So, before it, we have to define it no, first. Kasi pag sinabi natin organizational structure, di ba, kung nasa office kayo, nagtatrabaho kayo, di ba, may structure kung sino yung pinaka-head, no? sino, kung anong level ka doon, no? ano yung connection mo doon sa head. Okay. Ito daw ay isang systematic arrangement. So, arrangement ng relasyon ng bawat membro, bawat posisyon, bawat departamento, at ng kanilang function sa trabaho, no? Sa loob na isang organisasyon. So, how would you work together as an organization? How would you have a relationship or connection with, with, each, other, with, with each other? So, it also comprises the function. No? Yung function, yung trabaho, yung relasyon, responsibilidad, at yung authorities mo over sa individual, sa organization, kung ikaw ba yung head, no? Ikaw yung head ng isang organization, ikaw yung head ng isang unit, no? Ikaw ba yung, uh, ano dyan, yung visor dyan, ikaw ba yung manager dyan, do ikaw ba yung um, SME dyan. So, yung connection mo. So, pag sinabi natin organizational chart, yung organizational structure na yun, naka-illustrate siya, no? Para siyang in a, um, in a drawing, na in a form ng chart. Okay? So, yun lang naman yun. So, dito na tayo sa PNP, Organization Structure. So, ne medyo M ito, no? Um, I have a... Um, Nakaibang... Ano dito eh? Nakaibang PowerPoint for an organization. So, yeah. Alihin na muna natin tong chain of command. So, mamaya na tayo dun sa PNP organizational chart. So, pag sinabi natin chain of command, a director exercises authority and responsibility through a chain of command. A chain of command is consisting of three dif different levels of follow. So, una, the top echelon. Okay? Pag sinabi natin top echelon, the most level, topmost level, so sa pinakamataas na level, siya ang may responsibilidad ng lahat ng yun, no? lahat ng authority, lahat ng responsibility, kung saan ang kanyang subordinate or command ay nasa ilalim niya, no? The command group composed of the chief PNP, the deputy chief of administration or the DCA, the deputy chief of operations, 
DCO and the Chief of Directorial Staff or TCDS. Okay? So, ang um, top echelon yun ha, mula sa PNP Chief, no? To the Deputy Chief of Administration, to Deputy Chief of Operation, and the Chief Directorial Staff. Pag sinabi natin middle echelon, the next lower echelon constitutes such a subordinate command units apportioned by the commander in order to accomplish his task. The National Support Units, NSU, Regional and Provincial City, District Police Offices, compose the middle echelon. This echelon is further categorized below top middle echelon, regional offices. The intermediary middle echelon, the provincial city police offices, and the lower middle echelon is the provincial and city district offices. So we have the top, we have the middle, and next up is the last one, the lower echelon. Lower echelon is comprises of subordinate units for the apportioned by subordinate commanders, such as the city on and the municipal. So, guidelines tayo and structuring command organization. So, we have the division of work, the goal orientation, the levels of authority, the simplicity, the unity of command, responsibility and authority, the span of control, balance and symmetry, and the equality. So, class, it may or may not, but it's more on may. Lalabas sa board exam to, so you have to memorize it and you have to understand din, di ba? So, it's a division of work, di ba? Siyempre, di ba? Division ng trabaho. Ito ay tumutuo sa breaking up the work or function of its fundamental component part of increasing, increase specialization at the lower levels of command. So, may division ng trabaho. Kasi parang hinahati yung function mo, no? Be, base sa huwan ng specialization mo. So, ito yung mga guidelines tungkol paano gumawa ng isang command organizations. Ikalawa yung goal orientation. Ito yung grouping ng function should be oriented toward the accomplishment of goals of the organization. Ikatwa, ikatlo, ikatwa, ikatlo, the levels of authority should be minimal if possible so that the chain of command will be shorter. Simplicity, an organization will be structured simple to build in and Unity of command, oh. ito, tumutukoy ito sa subordinate is responsible. Only one commander and orders that came from the top echelon must be the same orders to be passed on the lowest echelon in the organization. It is important that one man can be in complete command of each situation, that only one man can be direct command or supervision of each officer. So, meaning unity of commander is sa um, iisang command, di ba? Nanggaling ang isang command sa pinaka-top echelon. Kailangan ko ano yung utos sa top echelon, kailangan same-same yan. Same nang maipapasa hanggang sa lowest echelon. Okay? Kaya yun ang halagahan daw na mayroong isang tao na may direct command or supervision sa bawat officer. So, ang laki niyan, di ba? Ang laki ng PNP organization structure. So, kailangan may unity of command. Responsibility and authority, areas of responsibility should be clearly defined and location authority logically established at very little, ah, ba na to, ah? sorry, sorry, very little, saan ako, <laughs> sorry, mm. responsibility and authority, no, so areas of responsibility, should be clearly defined and the location of the logical established in every every level in organization. Span of control, no? Favorite word, no? Favorite word, span of control. The ability of one man to direct, coordinate, and control immediately subordinates. There are two kinds of span control, the broad and the limited span control. We have... The balance and symmetry, the balance and, symm sym and symmetry in organization structuring should be observed with other principles of organization. Equality, nine. Responsibility comes when there is a commensurate authority and vice versa to specify the limit so that the abuse of power to authority shall be prevented. Homogeneity, homogeneous or similar grouping of work should be give way to necessary division. 
where working will result in placing together works which by their nature are incompatible. So, kung ano na yung mga same-same na nature ng trabaho, kailangan sama-sama yun, okay? Duplication and overlap. Overlapping of function and work and duty should be con- continually be avoided because of responsibility of several units of result to responsibility of no one. No? Merong magkakapareho ng trabaho, may pagka-overlapping, no? nakukuha na yung trabaho na hindi naman trabaho. So, yeah, kailangan na ayos yun. Okay, so let's go on practice question. So, kailangan natin mag-practice. Ano? Okay. This law provides the amended general qualification for appointment in PNP. So, the answer is letter B, the RA8551. Okay, second question. The DILG provides assistance toward legislation regarding... Oh my gosh. Let me say. Medyo ano siya talaga ngay. Medyo magulo yung laptop mo. Okay. Let's go on second question. The DILG provides assistance towards legislation regarding local governments, law enforcement, and public safety. Ba, syempre, no? A, e, absolutely true. Okay. A PNP uniform personnel who has been relieved for just cause or was not given an assignment within two years after, shut, shut, after such relief shall be retired or separated. So, B. Okay. It shall have the power to investigate all causes of fires, if necessary, file the proper complaints with the city or provincial prosecutor was jurisdiction over the case. So, ano yung agency na yun, ha? So, no, no, BF, BFP, Bureau of Fire, no, A. 18, under this theory, a police service, policemen are considered servant of the community. Sinabi ko na yun, home rule theory. Any uniform member of PNP who has been ex- exhibited acts of con- shoes, courage, on Pico's courage and gallantry at the risk of his or her life above and beyond the call of duty shall be promoted. Next, higher rank provided such act should be validated by commission based on established criteria. So, A. So, the PNP command group shall be in the following manner. Chief PNP, Deputy Director General for Admi- Administration, Deputy General for Operation, and Deputy of, and Chief of the Directoral Staff. So, C. So, it may be extended to any member of PNP for acts of contiguous courage and gallantry at risk of his life above beyond the call of duty or selected as such a nationwide search conducted by the PNP or any accredited civic organization. We call it special promotion. Okay? A kind of promotion where a candidate must satisfy all mandatory requirements fixed for a certain grade. Regular promotion. This year states that people have no share or little participation with the duties nor connection with the police organization. We have the continental theory class. He was the first Filipino cop when the Manila Police Department became an all Filipino organization. For first Filipino chip yan ha. So we have Colonel Antonio C. Torres. Okay. The purpose of its creation was to relieve the Spanish mil- mil- militia, militia and its pulsing function. So we have the Guardia Civil. The law established the Philippine National Police under the Organized Department of the Interior and Local Government. We have the RA-6975. The rank and file of the PNP is composed mainly of low-rank personnel. What is the lowest commission rank in the Philippine National Organization? C. Have Police Lieutenant. The following are the tri bureaus of Department of Interior and Local Government, except, no? Siyempre, Bureau of Custom, wala sa tri-bureau yan, di ba? We have the BJMP, BFP, and the PNP. 
Ano diba, yung tatay ng classmate? So, ako mag-apply. Try bureau lang ako. Chi- ano, mate? Ah, try bureau, no? Either pag hindi pinal sa PNP, sa BJMP. Pag hindi pinal sa BJMP, sa B- BFP, okay? Ganun. What is the second highest ranking officer in PNP? So, none of the above, ha? What is the rank of PNP? Chief of Directoral Staff, nasa quiz natin yan, Police Lieutenant General. It shall formulate policies and guidelines in administration of all district, city, municipal jails nationwide, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. What is the minimum age requirement of PNP applicant to qualify in PNP service? Not less than 21 nor not more than 30 years of age. So, the following qualification for regional directors of NAPOLCOM, all of the above, ha? 30 years old of age at least, a holder of baccalaureate degree and appro- appropriate civil service eligibility, has 5 years of experience in the field of law enforcement, criminology, or police administration. The minimum height requirement for male applicants in PNP under the regular recruitment, we have 1.62 meters. Meter. An applicant in PNP must not be or more than or le- be more than or less than any many kilogram from the standard weight corresponding to his height, age, and sex. So five. So the requirements for initial appointment PNP shall be waived in what order? Age, height, weight, education. A H W. So okay na yun, ha. So yon. Sana mag na review nyo at sana nakaral kayo mabuti kasi. Hindi lang appro- yung exam yung pinag ah, natin, yung prelims natin, midterms natin, or finals natin, or the P1, P2 exam. Hindi lang yun yung pinaganda natin. Siyempre, we're um, preparing ourselves for the board examination. So, ang um, preparation, we have to take note na hindi, um, hindi nagsisimula ang preparation kung kailan fourth year na kayo o third year. Nagsisimula yun on the day na mag-start kayong pumasok bilang isang criminology student. So, ngayon yun. Okay. So, I hope na na-review nyo at mag-aral kayong mabuti. Okay, dahil yan ang susi ng ating tagumpay. Kasi sino ba kasi ang nag ng tagumpay, di ba? Kasalanan na nag at kailangan pang susian. So, yun, no? Sana subscribe naman kayo kung di masama loob nyo, no? So, yun. Thank you and good night.